The inheritance of sex-linked traits is one of the questions that can often trip up matrix because the first thing you need to have an understanding of is the chromosomes that make up a biological man and a biological female. So when you're looking at a woman, a woman, I'm going to just say biologically, it's implied for the rest of this video, a woman has XX, two X chromosomes, and a man only has an X, one X, and a Y chromosome. The Y chromosome of a man is a lot smaller than the X chromosome that he possesses or that the, the X chromosomes that a woman possesses. So that means the Y chromosome physically holds fewer genes than an X chromosome. So let's just look at the inheritance of sex first. So a woman is XX, has a baby with a man who's XY. A woman can only give an X chromosome to her gametes. So her egg cells are only ever an X chromosome. Whereas a man's sperm cells can either carry an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. And this is a 50-50 chance. So when we're looking at the process of fertilization, fertilization of that those chromosomes will end up with a 50-50 chance of having a girl, two X chromosomes, where they inherit an X from their mom, that's a given, and an X from their dad, that's a 50-50 chance. Or there's a 50% chance that, that those parents are going to have a boy. So if you ever asked to explain how gender or biological sex is a 50-50 chance, it's about the fact that a man can give either an X chromosome to the child or a Y. The woman always gives an X chromosome. So it's actually the male's gametes that determine the gender or the biological sex, I should say, of a child. So there's a 50-50 chance that that child gets an X from the male sperm and a 50-50 chance it'll get a Y from the male sperm. So sex-linked traits are called sex-linked traits because the alleles for these traits are found on the X, X chromosome, not on the Y chromosome. Remember, the Y chromosome is physically smaller than the X, so it'll contain fewer genes, therefore fewer alleles. So the two sex-linked traits you need to know are hemophilia and colorblindness. You treat them both in the exact same way. If we were to give you another sex link trait in a specific exam question, then we would have to tell you that it is a sex link trait. But hemophilia and colorblindness are both sex linked, which means the alleles are found on the X chromosome, which we will represent as superscript. So let's have a look at an example. So you always use your highlighter to see what information you're given. So hemophilia is a disease caused by a recessive allele. A female who is a carrier for hemophilia has children with a man who is not a hemophiliac. Draw a genetic cross to show the chance of them having a son who is a hemophiliac. Use the letters capital H and small h. So because hemophilia is a disease caused by recessive allele, the small h is for having hemophilia. A big H would be someone who does not have the hemophiliac allele. So that is what we use our key for. Now the phenotype, if you look at the clue here, the man is not a hemophiliac, he is normal. But a woman who is a carrier for hemophilia, a carrier essentially means that she is heterozygous. So that means that on the X chromosomes, this woman, because she's a carrier and heterozygous, she will have a big H allele and a small H. But because hemophilia is a recessive condition, she will still be normal because the big H allele will mask her recessive hemophiliac allele. So that's important that when you do the, the phenotype of these two individuals, the female and the male are both considered normal. Even though the woman is a carrier, they're only telling you that as a clue for her genotype. So now we attach these alleles onto the X chromosomes, nothing on the Y chromosome. So the female is heterozygous. So she has X with a big H and X with a small H. And the male is normal. So he has X with a big H and nothing on the Y chromosome. Because we need to remember that the Y chromosome is smaller than the X chromosome. So therefore, there will be physically fewer alleles. So there is no space on the Y chromosome to have an allele for your blood clotting. Because remember, hemophilia is a clotting disorder. So when we look at the gametes that the woman can produce, she can either have an X with a big H in her, in her gametes, which means she's giving a normal allele to her children, or she can have an X with a small H, which is why we consider her a carrier. Whereas the male can either give an X with a big H, 
which means he'd have a daughter with a normal allele or a Y chromosome. So that would mean he'd have a son. But then the woman's genotype will determine whether the son has hemophilia or not. So when we do the genetic cross, we simply keep the X's in the front. So you have this this child will be an X with a big H, X with a big H. So that is homozygous dominant. This child will get an X with a big H from the dad and an X with a small H from the mom. So this will be a daughter who is a carrier. This child will get an X with a big H from and a Y. So Y from the dad, X with a big H from the mom. So that's a son who has a normal allele. So the son is normal. And then this child will get an X with a small H and a Y. So it'll be a son again, but it will be now a hemophiliac son. Now comes the tricky part with the sex link trait, determining the phenotype here. So these two children will be daughters. You can see that in their phenotype. So normally we don't include gender in a genetic cross. But because the genotype is XX or XY, you can physically see that in the phenotype. So we do now include the gender. So out of the two daughters that are XX, both of them have a big H. This one has two big H's. This one has a big H and a small H. And because hemophilia is only caused by that recessive allele, that normal allele for a big H will mask that hemophilia allele in this child. So this daughter is still going to be normal, but we'd call her a carrier in her genotype. But physically, phenotypically, she is normal. So we say that the offspring are two normal females and here, this male will be normal because he has a big H, so we refer to our key. But this male, however, will be a hemophiliac because he doesn't have another allele to mask that recessive one. Like this child, these children both have one small X with a small H. But because a male only has one X chromosome, that means that the chances of him being a hemophiliac are higher than a female because a female can have another X chromosome to mask the recessive one. So if we refer to our question, it said determine the chance of having a son that is a hemophiliac, we need to answer that question still. So now we just say here at the end, therefore there is a 25% chance or a one in four chance of having a son who's a hemophiliac. And we have proved that. So the key thing here was separating the genders. You don't say three normal children, one hemophiliac child. You must separate the genders because you can see that in the phenotype. So sometimes you'll see in past papers, you can get a question asking to explain why more males will suffer from a sex-linked trait. And that's especially true for hemophilia and colorblindness, which are the two you need to le learn. So that is because they only have one X chromosome and the Y chromosome does not contain an allele. So therefore, even if they only have one recessive allele, they will still show the trait. Or if it was even a, a dominant allele, they'll show it. But with the, if it was a dominant trait, then it would be shown anyway in a woman because that dominant trait would mask the recessive one. So it's all about the fact that a male only has one X chromosome, so all he needs is one allele for that disease or that condition, and he will show it. Whereas if a woman has one allele for it, and it's a recessive condition, the dominant allele will mask it. So that is why more men suffer from hemophilia and colorblindness. Colorblindness is exactly the same. We just maybe use an N for normal vision and a big N for normal vision, small N for colorblind.